Hey everyone, Gavin back from ThriveWP.com and um, today we're going to be looking at how to use um, SMTP settings to improve the deliverability of your contact form submissions. Um, so a lot of people will experience it, I have to. You have a contact form, somebody fills it in, they click submit, it all looks good on their end. Uh, they get a confirmation email sometimes to say that their message has been sent, but you don't receive it. And that can often be down to, it's not always, but it can most often be down to the way you have your uh, SMTP setting set up and how you tell that form to deliver the message, basically, to your email account. Uh, so the, the way to get around it, or the easiest way to get around it, really, is to use kind of a external SMTP service that uh, kind of usually fixes most of the problem. So we're going to have a look at that today and see how we can use that to improve the deliverability of your forms. All right, um, as you've noticed, you'll probably see that I've got my ugly mug up today. Uh, <laughs> so we thought we'd try a bit different um, on our video so that you get to see me and see who's talking behind the camera. So we'll see how it goes uh, and go from there. Uh, it might be that you don't like looking at me and I can turn it off. <laughs> right, so if you log into your admin, we've already got our plugin installed. I'm just going to move me out of the way over there. Um, so we've already got our plugin installed, which is called WP Mail SMTP. Now this is made by WP Forms, so it might be that you already use the WP Forms plugin. Um, if you do, then you'll know of that, that developer. Um, but it's made by the same people who create that WP Forms. But you can use this with, with any form whatsoever. Um, so just to kind of give you a rough idea, you the best thing to do quite often when you have issues around email deliverability with contact forms, there's a couple of issues that usually arise. Sometimes it's because your website is defaulting to uh, using this, the, your hosting's PHP um, email service. And what can happen with that sometimes is either it's not set up on your hosting or your hosting doesn't support it. Or um, because you're setting up your contact form to send from the same address that you're receiving it with. So for example, if you had a website and your website email was info at mywebsite.com. Okay, so you've got your form set up, but you also want your email to be, you want the form submissions to go to that email, info at mywebsite.com. But you also need to add a sender email. So if you're sending from that email and receiving at that email, it gets a little bit confusing sometimes. It's not a problem, but that's just one of the issues that can happen. Um, so to kind of combat all of this in the easiest way possible, really, is to use this plugin and use one of these services. Now we use SendGrid um, because it's a really easy service and for most people um, their free plan is actually really good. So they have a free plan and it's, uh, it says try it out, but you know, you can use it forever and you get to have a hundred emails a day. Now, if you're just kind of like a small business, you're not relying on crazy amounts of email, a hundred emails a day is a lot and it would be plenty for most people. So unless you're getting over a hundred form submissions a day, you should be good pretty much. All right. So what you do is you sign up to your account and then you'll have a kind of dashboard, something like this. Um, this is our das dashboard, so you'd have something like this, all right? And what you need to do to get your API key, okay, is you have to set up your account. What you would then do is you go to email API. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Let me just check we're going in the right place here. Uh, I've got to remember now, there's lots of different menus, <laughs> so you've got to remember API keys, yep, so you go to settings and API keys, okay, and then all you need to do is basically create an API key, so you click the button, you can choose what access you give it, um, also give your key a name, 
and click create. So that is your key. Okay, so you can copy that key. You can then go back to your website, um, select SendGrid, pop your API, API key in here, and you're you're almost done, pretty much. Okay, so once you've done that, you can click done. There's one important thing to to mention is once you've um, once you've created your API key, you cannot get the full API key again. So make sure you copy it and save it somewhere because otherwise you're going to have to create a new one. So if I forgot this key now, I just have to create a new one. There's no way to kind of access the full key. Um, and that's just for security, really. So the other, there's a couple of other things you need to do. So we just start from the top of this form. So you can use this plugin free. You don't need a license key. So the from email. So this is the email that your form is going to send from. So if your form is sending to info at my, my website com, okay, when you receive that submission, it's going to be sent from this address. So you can use the exact same address. However, sometimes that still causes a little bit of a problem. So you can use something like no reply. And a lot of the time, that email address doesn't actually have to exist. However, um, we do say it's better better for it to exist really even if you don't use it um, if it actually exists then it, it just removes another possibility that's an issue but it does I've, it has worked many a times for for myself where that email doesn't actually exist but you use that anyway like I say best best practice is that it should exist but try to avoid using the same email here that you would be receiving the form submission to all right, and then you can put force from email if you wish. We do um, so that any other kind of settings or plugins or form settings are overridden by these settings. So then you've got the from name. Okay, so when you receive your form submission, the 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 person's name will be whatever you put in here, and the email address will be that one. Okay, so you select your SendGrid like we said. You can use other services, and the setup is similar. But SendGrid, like I say, is it's kind of the, the easiest and the free plan is pretty good. Pop your API key in here and then sending domain is uh, something that's not necessary but is preferable. So basically putting your sending domain in there just adds another layer of um, validation I guess in terms of email sending and deliverability. So you can confirm your sending domain in SendGrid and all you have to do is you go to here and settings again and then do, 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 let's just find I think they've moved it <laughs> uh, let's just have a look do, 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 do. Somewhere in here is adding a sending domain, and for the life of me, I can't remember where it is, which isn't very useful for a video, <laughs> is it now? Uh, mail settings, no. Sending or authentication. Sender authentication. So that is what you need to do to add your sending domain. So settings, sender authentication, okay. And then you click authenticate your domain. You can select your DNS host, or if you're if it's not on the list, you can select other. Okay, you can type in whatever you like for the name of your host. Would you like also like to brand the links of this domain? Now you you can if you wish, but we tend not to. Um, and you just click next. Um, so then this is where you pop your domain. So whatever your website's domain name is, that's what you would put in there. Okay, so you pop that in there. Um, you can ignore the advanced settings if you wish, or you can kind of set these up as well. Um, DKIM you can kind of set up to help with deliverability, but it's not hugely essential. So you put your domain in there, you click next. Uh, so let's just go joeblogs.com, click next, and then what it'll do is it'll give you uh, three. DNS settings that you need to add to your DNS records and you do that at your uh, domain registrar so wherever you got your domain 
usually that's where you'll edit your DNS settings and you can probably ask your registrar or your hosting provider to add these DNS settings okay so there are it's just three C names and you add you copy the host and then paste it into your DNS settings and then you copy the value and you add that in as well so you do that three times for each individual one making sure that this host corresponds to this value and this one corresponds to that and this one corresponds to that okay um, so once you've added those to your DNS then all you need to do is give it give it a few minutes or so um, check that I've added these records and then verify and then what will happen is it will kind of it'll check your DNS to make sure you've added these and um, once it's verified that you've added them you're you're all good to go and basically all that does is it gives an extra check for SendGrid to check that the email is sending from the domain that you've said it's sending from and then of course that gives it a bit more reputation in terms of deliverability so that's it really doing all of these things um, with your with the plugin okay and with SendGrid will in theory um, improve your email deliverability in terms of your form submission so anybody filling in forms on your website this will help ensure that you are receiving them okay uh, and that's it really so if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you uh, have any questions um, drop it in the comments or if you have any suggestions for other videos we might be able to do um, then let me know because I'm always open to suggestions around videos and help around WordPress um, more than happy to, to help out and do a video if it, if it helps someone cheers for now